A very good evening to you and welcome to the news. I'm a very we're going on the headlines tonight. Governor Obiana urges state electorate to vote Abga candidates in coming general elections. Medical experts advocate healthy lifestyles to prevent stroke. Federal government to review revenue sharing formula over minimum wage. And on the following scene tonight, many persons killed, others injured in Colombia from bomb blast at Police Academy. And now details of the news, Governor William Biano says he will find lasting solutions to the crisis in Abga or cannot look at government's area to ensure a resounding victory for all progressive ground alliance. The governor gave the promise during a thank you rally to the council area held at Okanot Council Secretariat at Chala. Government House Correspondent A.G. Kabana was there for the ADS and now reports. According to Governor Obiano, who assured of continuity of all projects he is embarking in the area, stressed that Abga has the right representatives in their arsenal. He appreciated the people of the area for the support they gave to him during the recent gubernatorial election in the state with assurance of better life, adding that having Abga candidates will complement his efforts in all sectors of the state economy. Governor Obiano also led party faithful and candidates to Oka South Township Stadium, Arthur Eze Avenue in Oka, where he praised them for coming out to welcome him and promised to complete construction of the feeder roads in Oka. <laughs> So, Kabana, keep our votes. I, I, I swear, Guam Guam for the guy. Uh, second election, I swear, Guam 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 for the Abenaju Abria. Addressing party faithful in the council areas visited, the national chairman of ABGA, Chief Victor Oye, called on them to be proud of the party and always fly its flag high. with the scintillated performance of this governor, under the initially proposition of ABGA, the stellar performance of Governor Diana in Anambra, so that can be everywhere. I will talk Anambra retain the number one position in Nigeria, only when I got to for ABGA. The Transition Committee Chairman of Oka North and South, Mr. Ferdinand Onguje and Mr. Leo Nguba, respectively, pledged that they will deliver their council areas to Abga. Some frontline candidates of the party in the area, including the Senator representing Anambra Central Senatorial District, Chief Victor Ume, Chief Anna Ayon Nebe, among others, pledged total commitment to the party and its ideologies. Operation Abga Family, I to plead with you to continue to reciprocate the governor's kind of to the house. The governor is the pride of Igbo land. He is our pride. I will have to treasure our pride. The event climaxed when the Abga flags were given to Abga candidates in the area. From the Oka Township Stadium, AGK Abana, ABS News. Oh, still on voter education, more members of the All Progressive Grand Alliance Abga are optimistic that the party will record another resounding victory in a number of states in the next month's general elections. This, according to them, is because its formidable grassroots structure an impressive delivery of democratic dividends by its government over the years. The candidates of the party in a number of North Senatorial District in the forthcoming election, Dr. Chine Duemeka, while speaking during the campaign inauguration for Abga flag bearers by Governor Willie Obiano in Onitan North and South Wiki government areas, respectively. Dr. Emeka observed that Nigeria is at present practices a political system which does not tolerate independent candidacy pointing out that this explains why party agenda and manifestos matter a lot. He emphasized that the Afghan agenda is people-oriented, pointing out that this explains why governments enthroned by it in a number of states since 2006 have consistently taken interest in the well-being of the citizenry. The former deputy governor maintained that Afghan candidates who will be elected in the state and national assembly elections will work in synergy with the party leadership led by Governor Willie Obiano to continue championing the cause 
of the common man in Nigeria. Dr. Emeka reiterated his call on the Anambra electorate to appreciate the good work of the Obiano administration by voting in mass for all Abga candidates in the February 16th election. Following the call by Governor Willie Obiano for support to candidates of all Progressive Grand Alliance Abga in the coming elections, the second term election campaign of member representing Ayamelum State constituency, Honorable Uchi Okafo got a big boost with donation of a vehicle from former governorship candidate of Labour Party, now SSA, to the governor on PTD Nupeng and Union Martyrs, Honorable Nato Chiku Mutu. The presentation of the campaign Siena Boss in Oka was witnessed by friends and well wishes of the candidate, Honorable Okafo, who was eulogized by the man of the people, as the man of the people, whose re-election bid is based on solid first-term representation of IMLM constituency. Handing over the car keys to Honorable Okafor, Honorable said the gesture was in support of what he had done over the years and stated that Governor Obiano deserves the support and collaboration of a stable and hard-working legislature, which can only be possible by having astute lawmakers like Honorable Okafor in the State House of Assembly, and assured him of continuous support in his quest for second term. Earlier, Igwe Benjamin Okechi of Omasi thanked Honorable Nato Chiku for the kind gesture, noting that Honorable Kafo has proven to be trustworthy and dependable and would be rewarded by the people for his services. Also, other friends of Honorable Kafo expressed their support for his campaign in cash and campaign materials to ensure that he is returned to the Anambra State House of Assembly for a second term. Responding, Honorable Kafo noted, that the support would boost efforts at reaching the people and thank the donors for supporting his campaign. As medical advances globally seek for better management of stroke research has revealed that 80% of its cases are preventable. According to an ORCA-based medical expert, Dr. Enes Ifebi, the preventions include maintaining a healthy diet, exercising regularly, avoiding smoking and not drinking too much alcohol. Other preventable risk factors he mentioned include controlling high blood pressure, diabetes, and high blood cholesterol. Dr. Ifebi noted that factors that cannot be controlled include hereditary, old age, race, and gender. He listed the warning signs of smoke to include face drooping, arm weakness, and speech difficulty and ask for prompt medical attention for the victim if noticed. And away from that, the federal government is considering a review of the Federation Allocation Sharing Formula as demanded by Nigeria Governors Forum, NGF, to accommodate the 30,000 Naira minimum wage for states. The NGF recently pushed for a new fiscal restructuring plan due to the present economic realities in their state, which they claimed had made it impossible for them to pay workers' salaries. The governors had also given two conditions upon which to pay the proposed 30,000 Naira, a review of the sharing formula that will see them get more money or downsizing of workforce, claiming that accepting to pay the new wage without fulfillment of the conditions will make the state go bankrupt. Though the minimum wage tripartite committee led by the former head of service of the Federation, Ms. Ama Pepo, had recommended 30,000 Naira, the federal government agreed to pay 24,000 Naira, while state government insisted on 22,500 Naira. However, with the threat by the organized labor to shut down the economy, if the government refused to forward an executive bill to the National Assembly on the 30,000 Naira new minimum wage, the federal government summoned an emergency federal executive council FEC meeting on Tuesday, but it was resolved at FEC that the matter should be tabled before the National Economic Council next, before further deliberations. On business news tonight, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has unveiled the National Financial Inclusion Strategy designed to ensure that at least 80% of Nigerians have access to banking and other financial services. The governor of CBN, Mr. Godwin Emesile, represented by the deputy governor in charge of financial system stability, Mrs. Aisha Ahmad made the presentation of the National Financial Literacy Stakeholders Conference in Abuja. Emesula said about 36.8% of eligible Nigerian adults currently do not have access to financial services. 
adding that the figure indicated a significant improvement over the 41.6% exclusion rate recorded in 2016. He said the Apex Bank had also released new policy framework on consumer protection, financial literacy, and financial education. And on entertainment news tonight, 20 year old superstar and daughter of the late pop singer Michael Jackson, Paris, is reportedly seeking support at the treatment facility to improve her well being. According to media reports, she decided that she needed to take some time off to reboot, realign, and prioritize her physical and emotional health and checked herself into a treatment facility to aid in her wellness plan. Paris had previously opened up about her battle with depression and says it stemmed from hanging out with a lot of older people doing a lot of crazy things. Paris previously took to Instagram to plead with her critics to give her a break. And moving on to the foreign scene, at least 21 people were killed and dozens wounded after a Trump bomb exploded at a police academy in Colombian capital, the worst attack in Bogota in 16 years. Colombia's government declared three days of mourning as the blast also injured 68 others. The defense ministry said the terrorist act was carried out using a vehicle packed with 80 kilograms of explosives. The scene outside the General Satanda Police School in southern Bogota was chaotic in the immediate aftermath of the bombing, with ambulances and helicopters rushing to the normally tightly controlled facility. Fanny Contreras, the Colombian Armed Forces Health Inspector, said the truck entered the school compound suddenly, almost hitting the police, and then there was the explosion. President Ivan Duque ordered reinforcement to Colombia's borders and routes in and out of the cities. Right wing Duque, who assumed power in August, has peddled a tough line against Marxist rebels and drug traffickers in the largest cocaine producer in the world. And on sports news tonight, as the follow up to the success recorded in its first two editions, the Nigerian Premier Football League and PFL and La Liga are set to kick off the third edition of the NPFL La Liga Annual Coaching Clinic. The five-day clinic is expected to have about 100 youth coaches in attendance and will take place at the National Stadium Abuja from Monday, the 21st to Friday, the 25th of January 2019. The Annual Coaching Clinic will precede the NPFL on the 15 Promises Tournament and is designed to train youth coaches on how to properly develop young talents using La Liga methodology. The content of the clinic will, as usual, be framed within a level three professional syllabus, where coaches will learn more complex and technical aspects of La Liga's methodology as a continuation of levels one beginner and two intermediate training from the first and second edition. And that's it on the news tonight. But remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by logging onto our website, www.absradiotv.com. Like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash ABS Radio Television. And you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ABS Radio TV. And just before we go tonight, a quick reminder of our major stories. Governor Obiano has urged state electorate to vote Afghan candidates in coming general elections. Medical experts have advocated healthy lifestyle to prevent stroke. Federal government is to review revenue sharing formula over minimum wage. And on the foreign scene, we brought to you that many persons have been killed, others injured in Columbia truck bomb blast at police academy. And that's the size of our package tonight. Many thanks for joining the bulletin. I'm Iberi Ugunna. Have a lovely night rest.